Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms like our 21 SPY and ES mean reversion systems, our KISS trend following systems, of course our outstanding technical analysis, handful of trade ideas weekly, interaction with members, etc. Anyway, let's get started. So this is our back-end recorder, and this is a state-of-the-market technical analysis technical analysis review and it's August 2nd, 2023. I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Monday, October 2nd newsletter. Tonight's newsletter, as you can see, divided into seven major sections. By the way, I didn't add any new, new trade ideas, guys. I'm just simply going to make comments on past setups. You know, the market's too whippy here. No reason to throw a bunch of ideas out there. And, uh, you know, we're going to discuss some of the mechanical systems and, of course, follow the same general market theme as we always do, where we discuss the major indexes, bonds, sectors, U.S. dollar, commodities. All right. Now, as far as the market today, it was simply a bifurcation for the major indexes. The Dow closed down about 0.2%. Small caps, IWM lost 1.5%. That area has been absolutely pummeled. And you can see it with a lot of the you know, stocks in that group. Let's face it, guys. The indexes, the major indexes like the S&P and triple Qs are maxed by things like Apple and some of these big cap tech stocks. The average stock is much, much weaker than what the indexes show. But anyway, the S&P closed flat essentially while the tech area had strength especially because of Apple being up, triple Q's gained to 0.8%. So again, we had bifurcation today. The hope is that the higher low that was formed last week is going to hold and we'll have another push up. That said, realize that this could simply be wave C of four. And once that's done, you come down again in a wave five. Okay. Again, we'll take it level to level. Now, again, the problem with the market, as you know, is the U.S. dollar bonds and the 10-year treasury yield the dollar closed at its highs displays no divergence especially on the macd tlt 20-year bonds closed near their lows and t the 10-year closed strong we really need to see those areas reverse to put in a good market bounce so keep an eye on that here's the key events for the week and let's go and get started here so first thing going to talk about some of these mean reversion systems. So we have quite a few of these mean reversion systems that are open. Remember, we have 21 mean reversion systems that we run across both SPY and ES futures. I like to trade the micro contract. A lot of you probably do because, you know, even if you have quite a bit of money, the regular E-mini can eat up a lot of margin and, you know, et cetera. So anyway, we have quite a few of these mean reversion systems have you know, started to scale into the market pullback. Now, today I sent out a trade notification. One of the systems closed out for a tiny winning trade. The RSI oversold uh, system, you can see here at the bottom right, closed out. Okay. That said, the RSI oversold is also long on the ES contract, MES December. And it's actually looking to exit tomorrow at the very moment, okay? Everything else is still open. Oh, by the way, on the SPY, the trend pullback stopped out today on the open. We didn't see that because of an issue of TradeStation. That said, I have a stop that I'm going to set for this position, okay? Next. Image number 13. Here's the, I'm not going to show the ES system trades today because there wasn't anything new, but here's the SPY mean reversion trades for this year. You can see what's open. And again, the RSI oversold closed out today, you know, held the trade for five days for a paltry 30 bucks. So basically a wash, right? Didn't lose, it didn't make much. These other systems are still open like the CCI, the QEBTS. And again, on that trend pullback, like I said, I set a hard stop at 424.40. So if that's it, I'll let you know via trade notification. Okay, let's go and get back to the general market analysis. 
So item number four below shows the index sector table what transpired today. Like I said, bifurcation with those major indexes, the Dow down, especially the Russell. The strength was concentrated in the NASDAQ tech area. S&P closed flat. Remember, Apple was up today. It makes a big difference because it's such a huge weighting. Out of the 21 market sectors we follow here, obviously most were down. So again, breadth was negative, four to one. It did improve a little bit late in the day, but still closed quite negative. Again, where's the strength? Basically the tech area, semiconductors, technology, and communication services, okay? Everything else down. Utilities are what really took a hit today down four, over 4%. Four That's a huge move in XLU. Again, it doesn't like those high interest rates, et cetera. So think about how, how high the 10 year is now. It's probably going to 5.5%. Unbelievable. But big loss there. Energy was weak again. Again, most things were weak. Currencies, again, look at this gain. Up 0.8% for the day. It's a big move on one day for the dollar. All the other currencies obviously were down against it. Cryptocurrencies, um, mostly down. Remember, they broke out on the weekend, Bitcoin from that coil, and it pulled back today. Remember, Bitcoin trades basically 24 hours a day. Commodities, mostly to the downside, as you expect, especially the precious metals with that move up in the dollar. Gold down 1%, silver down 4.5%, finally busted that pattern hard to the downside. GDX, the miners, down 3.4%. They continue to lead down. As far as the other commodities, again, most of them are down. Crude oil down 2%, natural gas down 3%, copper down 2.6%. Those are the main ones. The commodities that were up were some of these ags, agriculture, corn, wheat. And of course, you know, look at these moves in the 10-year, 30-year, and TLT 20-year bonds. Next, item number five shows the economic news calendar. Tomorrow's the third. We just have the jolts, job opens. You could see the news items for the week. And I'll, by the way, being uh, a new month, we have the non-farm job payroll report on Friday is the big one. All right, guys, let's go and jump to these index charts. First chart below, item number six, is the weekly view of the S&P. Again, as you know, if you've been around breakpoint trades for a while, back in the spring, we were calling for the market to hold up and rally into the summer and to have a correction in August and September, maybe even October. And so far that has manifested. We held up all through the summer. We tagged the upper channel line, this resistance area. We had a RSI divergence. Everything was just lined up seasonality wise, everything technical, seasonality, uh, technical, everything was lined up for a pullback. So far we have a three wave pullback near the bottom of this channel now. Remember we pulled back from the top of the channel. Now we're near the bottom of the channel. This is either wave C, that would be the more bullish case, right? Where we go back to the highs or we're in a three. Again, we'll see guys how, how it manu fleshes out. Next, Charber 7, here's the daily view, shows the same channel. Again, we perfectly tagged this channel last week. We've been holding it. You know, remember we were talking about this coil pattern a couple weeks ago to watch that a big move and we that broke to the downside, allowed the S&P to fall to the bottom of the coil. As Steve talked about in the weekend, again, if you wanted to attempt a long down here with a tight stop just below that low, that's a pretty good low risk. You don't risk much if you're wrong. We'll see if this area can hold. Next, Jabber 8, here's a zoomed in daily view view shows you the same channel where we stopped at the top of that channel in late July, broke the channel line, back tested the channel line in uh, late August as resistance. Again, it's either wave A, B, C, or one, two, three. For now, we're holding this on a support zone. We tagged that open gap last week. If we do get another sell-off though, that open gap to me would be your magnet and maybe the 200 day moving average. We didn't fill that gap, which bothers me. Next, Chopper nine, here's the daily KISS system. Again, no changes. Remember, KISS system caught a nice trade from March into early August. It was flat, it went long, it stopped out, which is typical of these KISS systems. They got about 50, 60, 70% winning trades. So they have quite a few losing trades, unlike the mean reversion. 
and I don't mean by quite a few losing trades, but you know, if you have 60% winning trades, it means you have 40% losing trades. So usually after a nice winning trade, a lot of times the next one's a whipsaw. That's important because then the next buy signal may be a good one, right? Because we got the you know little whipsaw out of the way. Next. Job number 10, here's the four time frames we like to follow with our custom indicators. Again, as you know, late last week we added the mark nine on the daily. We bounced from it so far. And um, on these smaller time frames here, you know, we're below the ATR. We tag that as resistance on the 130 minute. And on the 78 minute, we broke above the ATR late last week. And so far, price pulled back and is trying to hold it. Next, chart 11, here's a half day chart we've been showing, no real changes. So far we have this three wave type pattern. Next, chart 12, here's a two hour view. Again, you can see the coil we talked about a couple weeks ago. That gave you an excellent short if you shorted the, the break of the coil. The best short obviously was either the lower high in late August, early September, or you know simply shorting in late July and holding on to it. Again, you can see this area was previous support. It turned resistance last week. We'll see if we can hold this higher low here and make one more push or not. If we don't, if we go down again, then we could see some better MACD divergence here. There's also an open gap back here in early June that would be a magnet. Next, chart 13, here's a two hour view. So little labeling here, you can see one, two, three, four, five. The fact that I can count five waves up still gives us some hope that we can form at least a little higher low here and then maybe make another move up. Again, that may only be a wave four, guys. But, you know, that wave five could be five waves of, say, A. This is a B wave pullback, and then we get a C move up. Again, we need to, really, I like to see today's lows hold. Next. Chapter 14, here's a 60 minute view. Again, this has these wave counts. So again, late last week, we had a clear five waves down. We had MACD divergence, right? So we were set the bounce. Whenever you have five waves, guys, up or down, you look for a reversal, okay? So you had clear five waves there. We got a bounce into this supply zone, pulled back. Now, that could have completed this wave four that we're looking at, right? But Let me start over. I had a distraction, one of my kids. So anyway, this 60-minute chart, again, we had that rally up last week. That could have completed four, right? You had three waves. But just from a time perspective, you could see wave one and two were a couple weeks. So, <clears throat> you know, and the fact that we can count little five waves on a smaller time frame, you know, I still think there's a chance we can form a higher low here, then push up again. But again, realize, guys, from technical perspective, this would still count better as a wave four. So you could get a move up, you know, if this higher low forms, get this wave four, then we get another move down to make another low in this five. You know, we have a nice MACD divergence set up and then we form our better low, you know, sort of end of your rally, all right? So that's um, the options there to consider. Next, chart 15, there's another 60 minute chart that shows you that big resistance level now, 4340. That was previous support. You can see it's resistance. And chart 16, another 60 minute view. Remember this coil we were showing a couple weeks ago? We said, if that breaks, look for a good move down and that obviously transpired. Okay, again, now we'll see if we can get this higher low here or not. And finally, chart 17, 30 minute view. Like I said, we can count five waves up short term. So I'm hoping we can get this, this odds do favor a higher low here and another push up you know, for that wave four. There's that open gap above. And here's another 30 minute chart showing a channel. Another target to the upside could be this channel. All right, moving on. Jarbert 19, here's the yes, the cues. Again, the cues have been stronger, as you know, you know, skewed by a handful of those big cap tech stocks and Apple. 
Next, chart number 20, here's a half day chart, still in this channel. It's amazing how strong the Qs still are considering what interest rates have done. And chart number 21, here's a 30 minute chart. Just like on the S&P, you can count five ways up. So, and you can see here what, you know, could be formed maybe a coil, you know, and then um, if this is correct, then we get another pop up. Next. And is number 22. Here's the Triple Q's KISS trend system. Again, as you know, so far this year, system did well, caught a nice trend, winning trade there from January into late February. Then it went long again in early March, caught a nice winning trade until August. And then after a couple of nice winning trades, remember the KISS trend systems with 60 or 70% winning trades. Like, you know, usually after a couple nice trades, you get a whipsaw, and that's what we got. So system is flat at the moment. Chapter 23, here's the four time frames. Again, similar look to the S&P. We had it to Mark 9 last Friday where we bounced. We're below the ATR and the, some of these other time frames. Um, we are slightly above it on the 130 minute and, of course, the 78 minute. We, we're holding it. Next, Chapter 24, IWM was down 1.4% today. The weakness here is extreme. We've sold off all the way from the top of that coil all the way to the bottom. Again, all you got to do is look at, you know, when you take out all those big cap tech stocks and you're looking at these small stocks, they have been absolutely pummeled. Chapter 25, here's a daily view. Again, hell of a sell-off from the top of that pattern. We had that RSI trend line break there for an excellent confirmation. Remember I talked about this head and shoulder. You can see the slant and head and shoulder here. That's obviously been playing out. Now we're in a potential demand zone here. We have the uptrend line here. The onus is on the bulls to hold this, guys. Does not look pretty. And finally, chart number 26. Here's the 30-minute chart. Now, Unfortunately, guys, remember I said on the Qs and the S&P had five ways up on the shorter time frames that gave of higher odds that gave us odds at a higher low. Well, that didn't happen on the S on the IWM, did it? You can count little five waves up there, but instead of making a higher low, it went right to a new low. All right. So again, on the S&P and Qs, the onus is on the bulls, guys. There's a lot of headwinds in place with the 10-year, what it's doing, and the U.S. dollar. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at some of these indicators. Chart 27, here's the VIX. As you know, the VIX closed inside its upper Bollinger Bands uh, early last week for a little buy signal. And we have got a little bounce from there for now. The VIX otherwise had built this nice little base over, you know, two and a half, three months where it rallied from. Next, chart number 28, here's the NYSI summation um, 9 EMA crossover system. Simply the NYSI with the 9 EMA. You get your buy and sell signals whenever the NYSI crosses the NYSI. And again, while it doesn't catch the tops or bottoms, it catches a good maybe 80% of the move. Excellent signals here. Take a look at these. Excellent sell signal there in early August, obviously. It's obviously not close to giving a buy signal yet. Here, so far, this uptrend line on the S&P we're holding for now. But again, nice little system. Remember, from these newsletters, we provide you the live chart URLs to these so you can bookmark them and see the updated view anytime you want instead of just viewing a static image here. Chapter 29, here's the NYSI weekly system. Again, this gave an excellent signal, sell signal back there in late July, right here. You can see it's overall signals have been pretty good on this puppy. Again, for this to give a buy signal, it needs a trigger. You need to take out the high of the previous candle, which is here. Doesn't look like it's going to happen this week. Next. Trevor 30, here's the um, NYA. This is what was put out on the weekend by Tom McClellan, I think, and uh, one of his charts. So he looks at this 
the NYSC, new highs minus new lows. And below this area, he generally, you know, calls it a bear market. And so we're kind of right there now. Next. Chapter 31, here's the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 that are above their 20-day EMA. You can see it's worked its way down to 10%. Remember back in July, you had a negative divergence there. It was up in the 85 percentile, percentile. So this is getting oversold. Again, it's been more oversold. There is no divergence here, though. So be aware of that. You get your better lows usually when there's a divergence. We don't have that. Doesn't mean you have to have it. Next, let's move on. Just review a few of these uh, sectors. Again, strength was in the technology today, like XLK, slightly up. Again, it's got a lot of work to do. Moving averages above. Chapter 33, the communications sector, XLC. Again, that contains some of those FANG type stocks. It's obviously still holding up very well. Chapter 34, semiconductors also holding up very well. Bounced off this little support last week. Next. Chapter 35, financials, they've been weakening along with banks, which I'm not showing tonight. Chapter 36, transports, IYT. Again, sell off all the way from the top of that trend line all the way to the bottom here. Will it hold? We'll see. Chapter 37, biotech, XBI. Look at this sell off. Again, this is a big component of small caps and which have been decimated, and you can see what biotech is doing. There is a little RSI divergence here on the five length and the 14, so we'll see, but I can also count five waves here. One, two, three, four, five. So, you know, this is something to watch for an oversold washout bounce, but boy, super weak. Chapter 38, airlines. Look at this sector. Look at this sell-off from early July, absolute dump Ola. But, but take a look at this mean reversion type, their statistic anomaly. It has 49 consecutive closes below the nine EMA. The nine EMA is the pink magenta. So yeah, what I mean by closes is it's closed 49 consecutive bars below it. You know, you've had some intra bar moves above it. You can see here, little candle wicks but I'm talking about a close. So every close has been below. You do have divergence building, and this is why positive divergence is not a buy signal. Divergence started way back here. Imagine if you bought it way back here. You need a trigger. And really a good trigger at this point would be a good reversal and a close back above the 9 EMA at minimum. Next, chapter 39, here's the ETF Jets, same. Analysis essentially applies. Chapter 40, here's a two-hour view of jets. Got this very perfect, clean channel going to be monitoring. If you want to trade this, monitor this for some sort of trigger, like taking out this trend line or something like that. Next, chapter 41, materials. This continues selling off. Chapter 42, Consumer staples, again, look at, you know, under the surface, guys, under the surface of the skewed indexes like the Qs, a lot of these sectors have been absolutely pummeled. And look at utilities here, down 4.65% today. At the lows, it was down 5%. That is the biggest move in years, again, caused by that move in the 10-year Treasury yield. Chapter 44, here's the weekly view again after losing had the 200 week moving average here which was holding support for the last few years finally gave way and um here 61.8 fib retracement from the 2022 lows isn't that far away looking at real estate obviously strong sell-off from that rising wedge there is a little rsi divergence here short term but we all know the problem with interest rates mortgage rates are now about eight percent folks Chapter 46, here's home builders. This We had some shorts in this area. They still look okay, and this still looks like it's on target at least to tag its 200-day moving average. Next, moving on to energy. This was a sector that was holding up very strong, but finally succumbed to selling. 
you know, we had a little double top back here, another sell off today. To me, the more obvious one was oil services. OIH, you had clear five waves up. You see that? Five waves up with a little rising wedge. That was very bearish. We had a sell off and then a bounce lower high. So I have this either as wave A or one, B or two, and we're either in C or three. I posted late last week that I shorted this. It was just an obvious lower high, bounce. but nice to see this area work off. I still think this works lower. Let's move on to commodity. Oh, before we go to commodities, here's the bullish percent energy index. Remember guys, I was pounding the table back in early September that this thing was up at 96%, not the area to be buying energy stocks. You know, I said, be careful, you know, just wait. And hopefully it did. The BPDR finally gave a sell signal crossing below this, these moving averages. It's now fallen all the way to 56 and percent. So it's come down a long way. Nice to see that. Remember the last low risk buy uh, signal in this group was back in early June right there. Chapter 50, uh, moving on to commodities. Here's DBC. Again, with that rising dollar, commodities have been taken under the chin. Nice increase in volume today. We're still holding that 50 day. That's the area to watch now. Next, Chapter 51, crude oil. That divergence. Wide moving average ribbon we were talking about last week, finally kicking in. Again, slowing economy, rising dollar, everything. Dollar pulling back, less de or crude oil pulling back and less demand. Closing both the 20 day moving average, could now set it on target to tag its 50 day moving average. Next, Jabber 52, natural gas. Here's the weekly chart. I like this better than looking at the daily. This is really the pattern that's been developing for the last year, this kind of Triangle type pattern. Chapter 53, here is UNG, natural gas ETF, daily view, forming a coil. Chapter 54, copper down 2.5%. Still in this type of coil-like pattern, looks vulnerable. Chapter 55, there's the daily. Look at today's ugly candle. Chapter 56, uranium finally pulling back. It's had a heck of a run here. Nice big pullback the last two days. That said, I still love the longer term chart. To me, I welcome this pullback. I'll look for another buying opportunity sometime in this pullback because I love this monthly chart. I do think it goes a lot higher over time, but it got stretched short term. Let's move to bonds and interest rates. Chapter 58, here's the 10-year treasury yield. This is the bigger picture chart Steve showed on the weekend. Again, remember, guys, think about it. Interest rates were in a 30, basically in a 40-year secular bear market. When we broke this trend line, this 35-year trend line channel in early 2022, that ended the secular bear market in rates. So rates are up for the longer term. I'm talking about 10, 20 years. Now, if rates keep going here in the short term, a target could be around five and a five and a quarter percent here. Chapter 59, here's the weekly view. Again, as you know, we broke through that resistance three weeks ago. It's been up, up, and away since. Chapter 60, there's the daily view up yet again today. We do have a little RSI divergence here. I don't have it marked, but we do have a little bit. If this does cause a little pullback, maybe that'll help the market bounce. Chapter 61, TLT 20-year bonds, they move opposite of rates. Remember, they're opposite. So TLT strongly down near the below the channel now. Chapter 62, here's the monthly TLT chart, a heat pound in the table. This demand zone down here, I've had it labeled as a five-wave decline. And so far, my prediction has been playing out. We're in this fifth wave. We'll see if we can get into this area or not. Now, I do think when it bottoms here, it's going to have a decent ABC bounce, and that'll probably help the market. You do have some MACD divergence developing here. Driver 63, here's high yield corporate with the S&P. The, ten, ten, the two tend to be highly correlated, so you always want to keep an eye on high yield corporate if you're looking at the markets. Driver 64, here's the daily, obviously weak here. Now, you do have the 200-day moving average here. So again, we need to see this area 
shore up for the market to bounce. Chapter 65, here's Bitcoin. So last week we were showing this coil or diamond. It broke out actually on the weekend and it was up today initially. Pulled back a little bit, but still looks okay. Moving on to the US dollar. Up yet again, closing near its highs. You know, no MACD divergence here really, just unbelievable strength. Chapter 67, there's the weekly again. Hell of a rally off that 200-week moving average. How many weeks has this been up now? Look at this. Anyway, bullish break in structure and symmetry here. Why is that important? Because on the next pullback, that tells me it's likely to form a higher low and then go again. Okay. And let's remove those annotations. Let's see. There we go. Moving on to precious metals, Charbert 68, gold, down yet again, down 1%. Remember this tight coil, it let loose early last week. Again, the warning was the stocks were underperforming. Look at that ratio. So I was long a little bit of GDX a couple weeks ago into this, but when this ratio started declining, I got out of them. I should have shorted the hell out of them, which I didn't. But uh, anyway, it's down. Maybe this is a wave C. We'll see where it ends. 61.8 fibs down here. That could be a good area to dip your toe in, but let's move on. Trevor 69, there's the weekly. We obviously broke that coil hard to the downside last week, following through again. Trevor 70, here's on the weekend, Steve did some of this um, cycle work and I like what he did here. You can see gold tends to move in these cycles. And um, this would maybe project gold bottoming sometime later in the year, early next year. Because I do think gold is going to have its day, guys. There's just too much bullshit going on. I think eventually there's going to be a reset in the global currency markets. There's just too much unfathomable debt, not just in the U.S., but everywhere. And I think gold will have its day then, but right now it is downtrending. Chapter 71, another chart of gold. I don't know why I have two charts. Anyway, um, let's move on. Chapter 72, silver. Remember this coil? Well, it broke to the downside hard, as you can see. Chapter 73, there's the daily. It finally broke that pattern to the downside. You can see on Friday tried to bounce, stalled those moving averages, and lost this pattern. Looks ugly. Let's move to... Uh, GDX, the miners, here's GDX. Again, as you know, we simply had that three-wave ABC bounce into the channel line a couple weeks ago. Your moving average ribbon was bearishly pinching. You had a RSI trend line break. Sold off. We, tried, we bounced a little off this little support zone, but to me, that was a weak support, and we lost it today. Where would the next target be? Lower the channel line. And also, this area here, there's a little demand zone. And if things really weaken, there's an open gap that was never filled back here in November that could be a target down around the, you know, 23 area. Trevor 75, here's another chart of GDX. Again, this is the channel I'm monitoring, lower portion of the channel. You have this open gap below here. Trevor 76, now the one ray of hope here Here's a 60-minute chart. Remember I talked about when you have five waves, look for a potential reversal. You have five clear waves here to the downside, and you have MACD divergence. Because we have this, there is a potential, or this is an area I'm going to watch for some sort of bounce. Chapter 77, here's a monthly chart of GDX, also with some cycle work Steve did on the weekend. And you can see um, this also projects Major, maybe a major low sometime early next year, similar to gold. We'll see if that plays out or not. Finally, Charber 78, BPGDM. It's down at 10.7%. Again, it's in the very oversold territory. It can obviously go lower. You know, back in excellent sell signal there in late April when this first gave a sell signal. Charber 79, here's the FXY. That's the Japanese yen versus gold. Japanese yen tends to lead. And remember, you had a big negative, you had a big warning here a couple weeks ago when the yen was declining and gold was moving up. 
Well, what happened? Gold ended up getting pulled down with the yen. Okay. Now, on a reversal, one thing to watch is this RSI trend line. All right, guys, finally, we're going to follow up with just trade ideas. Nothing new. I'm just following up on recent ones. So here's GPCR. This was a long idea of mine last week with the resistance at 36.25. Um, it triggered on, let's see, Monday, thir Friday, triggered on Thursday. I, I went long on Thursday. I sold half of my position. And Friday, it doubled. So I hope some of you got lucky. Sometimes you get lucky. Doesn't happen that often, but once in a while you get lucky. Um, so that was one of those lucky cases where news basically doubled it overnight. Trevor 81, CNK, I've had this on the list. It's been holding up well, though it hasn't been closing at the highs. A lot of little dojis, but still holds up very well. Trevor 82, ACHR was a coil pattern that broke down a couple weeks ago. Great short, recently stalled at the 90 MA, still looks weak. Trevor 83, PHM, home builder. You know, you can see it broke support, back tested as resistance. Trevor 84, CAMT, this was a long idea that popped last week, but, you know, MACD divergence on that pop. Nice pop there, hope you took some profits on that um, move. And finally, chart number 685 CRS was on the list for quite a while as a coil. Finally starting to break to the downside. All right, guys, quick check on futures. ES futures are flat this evening, so we'll see how they open tomorrow. And again, the onus is on the bulls. Have a great evening. Thank you for, for your support. Tell your friends about us. Take care.